G'day guys, my name is Wise well, Feature Video. Today I'm going to be talking to you guys about NRL Round 15's recap preview for 2021, guys. Let's get started. So starting off with that first game of that match, we see the Broncos going up against the Rabbitohs. Now in this game, the Rabbitohs, no, the Broncos actually, they were playing hopeless. They didn't really execute very well. Unfortunately, they didn't. I do say the Broncos, I feel so sorry for them because this game didn't turn out to go really well for this team. And the Broncos aren't really a very good team at the moment with things going astray. Um, but I heard that Ben Eichen will be the head of football of the Broncos anyway, so hopefully he'll change a bit of ways how Broncos will lead into that position. But anyway, uh, Broncos, they were just lacking very support like on attack and defence, and they didn't really look very familiar like how the way they want to play their game of football. But I just didn't think that in this game that the Broncos, they weren't going to win against this Rabbitohs side because the Rabbitohs have had a really good defense and attacking team. I know that the Broncos are a really good team, but the Rabbitohs, they were just on fire with Latrell Mitchell, Dane Gagai, Adam Reynolds, Damian Cook, but Alex Johnston scoring two tries in that game was absolutely brilliant. Latrell Mitchell scoring a try, Hamay Sele scoring a try, absolutely good quality plays in this Rabbitohs side, and I just didn't think the Broncos, they were going to be up and on their form, but yeah, unfortunately though, the Rabbitohs did win 46 points to nil, um, which leaves the Broncos scoreless in that game, but luckily, thankfully for me, I went for the Bronco, I went for the Rabbitohs in this team, um, but yeah, my player of the match went to number two um, from the Rabbitohs, Alex Johnston, that scored two tries in that game, but yeah, well done from the Rabbitohs for making a really good win against the Broncos anyway. Rabbitohs. The next game of that match, we see the Cowboys going up against the Sharks now. In this game, this was going to be real tight and real hard. Um, I was expecting the Cowboys going to win this game, but unfortunately they didn't. But they did score a couple of points in this game. I think it was led by four tries. Um, but apparently they only lost by two points for the Sharks to win in that team. But in this game, the Sharks, they were absolutely really dominant. They were playing really hard in this game, and I just didn't think in this match that the Sharks, they were going to win. I didn't think they were, but Sean Johnson, he was being absolutely dominant in this team. That really kept the Cowboys not to win in this game. I just didn't think in this match that the Cowboys were going to win because obviously they are struggling a little bit, um, but not too much. But the Sharks, they are struggling too, which I didn't really think that in this game uh, the Sharks were going to win by two points. 26 to 24, the scoreline. And I just didn't think in this match that it was going to be a good quality game of football, but... It was, it was average, it was pretty tight. I just didn't see the Cowboys, like, if they were gonna win or not. But it was pretty much a tight contest in this game, which I didn't think, like, in this match that it was gonna be a f real firing up game anyway. But credit to the Sharks, they were absolutely really good in this team, um, in this game. They were really dominant, working to themselves to really get that dominant um, pace going. Um, but yeah, this game was really tight, really hard, but yeah, credit to the Sharks, they were really getting it done for the team anyway. Um, but yeah, my player of the match went to number seven from the Cronulla Sharks, Sean Johnson. I think he had a wonderful game, really um, stepped up in this match to lead this Sharks uh, through. But yeah, well done from the Sharks for making a really good win against the Cowboys anyway. 26 to 24, the scoreline. The next game of that match, we see the Panthers going up against the Roosters. Now, in this match, um, the Roosters in the first half, they were really good um, playing in the first half. They were leading 12 points to nil. And then, obviously, in the second half, the Panthers, they were absolutely dominant. Um, they were really getting it up there. And 
<coughs> obviously with Nathan Cleary, Jerome Luai, Brian Toto coming back from Origin. This game was basically a real sellout crowd for this match because I think that this game was a really good um, comeback of this match. Like, since the Panthers, I thought they were going to win in that match, which they did anyway. 38 points to 12 in that match. I just didn't think in this game that the Roosters, they had that energy and spark because they are losing some really good players, I know, but... I'm just going to say that I don't think they'll be in the top eight. I just don't think they will because how the way they're playing at the moment, it just really worries me a bit for the um, Roosters and I just don't think they'll be on the top eight side. Um, if they do, but I reckon they won't get into finals or grand final, but I have to wait and see anyway. But in this game... What I do think about this match, like, the Roosters, they were really good um, in this first half, but in this game, I really do think that in this match, um, the Panthers, uh, they were going to be a really good team, but they obviously were. Um, but in that match, really had that spark and speed for them. Um, but, yeah, well done from Nathan Cleary. Uh, he had a wonderful game. But yeah, two tries went to Brian Toto. So my man of the match in this game from the Panthers, number five from the Panthers, Brian Toto. That scored two tries in that game. And it was 38 points to 12 for that score. The next game of that match, we see the Knights going up against the Warriors. Now in this match, um, it was a rainy day. I heard about this game. Um, I heard that my mate went to um, entertain us, went to, I think he went to this game, Knights and Warriors. Wait, actually, no, he didn't. Sorry, no, he didn't. Um, I heard that uh, in this game, it was pretty tight. Wet weather conditions led to the poor scoreline of this game and obviously slippery ground, which led to um, knock-ons, slippery conditions. Um, and it was pretty much hazy uh, at McDonald Jones Stadium, Broadmeadow, Newcastle area. But I just don't think that... This match was going to be a real tight game anyway because obviously the Knights and the Warriors are a little bit off for the season. I just don't think in this game that it will be like it was going to be a really tight game, a really hard game, but it obviously was since it led to that conditions. 10 points to 6 it was. Very low scoreline I've ever saw. Usually I see like 8 points to 6, but 10 points to 6, it's just real tight, real like game of football but I just have a gut feeling in this game that it was just a really shitty game and I just think it was a pretty boring game I do apologize if I am saying a bit negative stuff but I just think in this game it was pretty much terrible hopeless and it was a useless game of football and the Knights usually struggle on every side um, but since they got the win only just in the final minutes in the second half <sighs> this game was going to be a real tight game but yeah well done from the Newcastle Knights only just um, winning this game 10 points to 6 against the Warriors but yeah my player of the game I think went to either number 11 or number 12 Lachlan Fitzgibbon for making this try, a really good try anyway, from the Newcastle Knights. The next game of that match, we see the Dragons going up against the Raiders. Now in this game, the Raiders, they were going to be a really good team. Obviously in this match, that it is, it was pretty much a tight game, but I did pick the Raiders in this game. I thought they were going to win, but they really stood out hard, really felt, thought hard, but Congratulations from Tyrell Sloan uh, for making his NRL debut and the full back side of number one replacing Matt Dufty in that squad. Um, yeah, congratulations on him. But he did really well uh, in this game. He is a speedster. He is kind of like Matt Dufty speed. But in this match, I really did think that in this game it was going to be a real tight game and it obviously was anyway. But the Raiders... They were really 
making it tough for the Dragons, but obviously they were leading a couple of points in the first half from the Raiders, but then in the second half, the Dragons, they were really coming out hard and really coming out hard badly, and they obviously did. 22 to 20 for that scoreline, only just by two points, really sealed the deal by the Dragons, and this game was gonna be a real hard decision to obviously make, but in that match, really executed game of football by the Dragons, and usually they don't really cooperate very well, but in this match, really thought hard by this team, and obviously they are a really good team anyway. Um, but credit to the Dragons for making a really good match anyway. Uh, 22 to 20, and obviously this game was really tight game of football, but obviously congratulations on Tyrell Sloan for making his NRL debut, but my man of the match went to number 21 that made his NRL debut, Tyrell Sloan. He did a wonderful game, um, obviously scoring a couple of tries in this game, but yeah, 22 points to 20 for that score. The next game of that match, we see the Storm going up against the West Tigers. Now, in this match, it was pretty much a really bad, bad, obviously, game by the West Tigers because they were shocking. And I'm saying they were really shocking. Obviously, I know they scored three tries, but still, they were shocking. 66 to 16. How bad was that? by the West Tigers. They didn't really they didn't really play hard and they were just letting the Melbourne Storm getting this like getting the win. And obviously like the Melbourne Storm are a big, solid, really good team. And sixty six the sixteen I don't really see this big of a scoreline and really I just don't think that they are a really good team the West Tigers but since this happened I just didn't really think that they were gonna really put effort against the Storm and they didn't the Melbourne Storm were really good in this game and they were absolutely awesome because they played to their heart out. And obviously in this match, they were really, really woeful. Obviously getting the scoreline up, like big margin, big thrashing. I just think in this game that it was a really bad game from the West Tigers. But anyway, my man, my man of the match went to number one from the Melbourne Storm. In this match, um, Nico Hines from the Melbourne Storm. But yeah, well done from the uh, Melbourne Storm for making a really good uh, win against the West Tigers. Anyway, 66 to 16, that's good. Cool. The next game of that match, we see the Eels going up against the Bulldogs. Now, in this match, the Bulldogs, they were playing really good in the first half, uh, scoring two tries in this game. But then, obviously, the Paramount Eels in the first half, like in the end, kind of, uh, they were playing really good. And then, obviously, in the second half, they were playing absolutely really good in this game, scoring so many points. And the Bulldogs, they were just letting them, obviously, score uh, tries after tries after tries. But 36 points to 10 was an average game of football. Um, usually, the Paramount Eels struggle a little bit, but they come out on top with pressure, attack, and defense. And what do they have? Attack and defense, and they are pretty good at that. Usually, they play if they play up against the Storm, if for example, they don't really control that very well. But then going up against the Bulldogs, they play really good, because obviously they are a really good team, um, the Eels. Because since Mike Osivo is out due to suspension, uh, led to Sean Russell, number two. Congratulations on him for making his NRL debut. 
uh, for scoring two tries anyway. Well done from him. Um, obviously, Regan Campbell Gillard scored. Um, not too sure who else, but all I know is that um, this game was just really getting it done by the Parramatta Eels. Obviously, they are a really good team. I just thought the Bulldogs, if they were going to win, I didn't think that the Eels were going to win because since it led to um, 12 points to 6, uh, I think it was at half time, I believe, and then 36 10 led to the Eels win against the Bulldogs. Absolutely surprising win, but yeah, my man of the match went to number two from the Parramatta Eels, Sean Russell, and it was 36 points to 10, the scoreline anyway. And last but certainly not least, we see the Titans going up against the Manly Seagulls. Now, in this game, okay, this match was obviously a really good game by the Titans that led a couple of points in the first half, and they were playing really good. But then in the second half, the Manly Seagulls came out firing in this game, 56 to 24, that scoreline, and I just didn't think in this game it was going to be a really good effort by the Manly Seagulls if they weren't going to play as good, but they obviously did. <sighs> Cannot believe that Tom Trevojevic scored three tries in that game. He is an absolute weapon for his club and his team. I just think the Titans, they were lacking support defense and attack and really in this game I just didn't think in this game it was going to be a really tight match but obviously it was and in this game and obviously it was a really good um, game of football by the Manly Seagulls obviously winning against the Titans and I obviously picked the Manly Seagulls anyway to obviously win against the Gold Coast Titans but Jane Campbell he played a really good game um, Obviously, I think in the first half, he was really on top of his form. But in the second half, it was obviously Manly Seagulls all over. And I mean Manly Seagulls all over. <laughs> all over Red Rover. I just have a gut feeling that Manly Seagulls will be really good for next round um, of football. But obviously, with Tom Trevojevic in that side... I reckon they're going to be a really tough team to beat. But, yeah, my man of the match went to number one from the Manly Seagulls, Tom Trevojevic, that scored three tries for the Manly Seagulls to obviously win, um, to get up on the top of the scoreline. But, yeah, 56-24 for that match. Thanks so much for watching my video, guys. Stay tuned for more. We'll be doing a couple of videos coming to you guys soon. Also, we'll be doing more videos coming to you guys soon. So stay tuned for more. Plus, leave a like and subscribe to my YouTube channel and for this video. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Till then, take care, guys. Stay safe and have a good one. Plus, let's get up to 300 subscribers. We're seeing on 215 anyway. So let's go up to that. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care.